Designers, welcome to another talk. My name is Jofin and I've always been curious about tools and techniques that actually improve and speed up your workflows. AI is one such trending area that I have been interested in. Unfortunately, I haven't found time to explore it. I'm pretty sure that you are very curious to know about this topic in a long time. That is why I've invited a fellow designer, Mihir, who has over 10 years of experience crafting the customer experience, setting up healing design teams, it has enabled the digital transformation for clients in many geographic areas around the world. Now he's explored the intersection of design and AI with tools like ChatGPT, MidJourney, and a lot more. He's here to join us today. So without any further ado, I'll let Mihir introduce himself and show us some practical use cases of these tools. Mihir, stage is yours. Hi, Jopin. Everyone, happy to be here. My name is Mihir. I've been doing design for well over 10 years now. Started off doing engineering, found my way into design when I studied at NYU. And a place where I realized that any technology we're working with is always something new on the horizon. Okay, what exactly is this AI? What is this GPT? Generative AI is from the word generative, where it is generating content for you. GPT is a generative pre-trained AI. So the idea of being pre-trained means that you don't have to go in there and give it all the information that needs to function. Like right now, if you ask chat GPT, what are the elements in the periodic table? It already knows. It has been trained on that. Chat GPT in particular has been trained on pretty much all of the internet, the publicly accessible internet, until 2021. And what it does, whenever you ask it a question, it generates a response based on what it thinks is the correct answer. Again, yeah, remember, what it thinks, right? So what does it all mean for us? We have this brain that knows the entirety of the internet that you can ask any questions and it'll give you almost any answers, right? So what does that mean? You don't need smart people anymore because these computers are coming? I don't think so. I found this beautiful quote recently. AI is not going to replace you at work, but somebody using AI tools to work more efficiently will. Because your employer and any employer is going to value more productive, by productive I mean eventually, output kind of productive, right? Where someone's able to produce more work in a shorter amount of time is going to be valued by the company more. And AI tools are going to help you become that faster. So how do we get started with ChatGPT? Start with the basics. Uh, you go to chat.openai.com. It's a super simple sign up with your Google account. You can click on it. I already have an account, so I will not actually go through the sign up in front of you. If you have any troubles, just shoot me a message. I'll have my uh, contact details at the end. I will show you what ChatGPT looks like, but first I want to show you a few things that I've already done with it, just so you know you warm up to what it's like. It is a great replacement for Google search. The reason why Microsoft's literally so happy and why Google is literally panicking is because I don't need to go to Google anymore. I can literally say, explain me this thing in the context of startups. Because I didn't know what it meant. And if I go to Google search, I have to go through three, four different articles, read what five different people have written, then sort of understand, okay, what is the thing? What's the consensus about this particular topic? I can ask you to explain using analogies. So when I asked for the APIs, it gave me a beautiful an analogy based on restaurants. You know what? I did this because it knows I'm big time into food. Like before I asked this question, i just been asking it for a lot of meal prep, recipes and stuff like that. So I'm assuming it gave me this food-based analogy because it knows I talk a lot about food. I can use it as an executive assistant, ask you to write all those boring mails. This has saved me a good half an hour of thinking about what to write. Fantastic. Love it. I'm going to switch to the chat GPT UI now, but the rest of the presentation I will have for download for you all later, right? And there are some prompts that you can try on your own. Okay, so we are now in ChatGPT. When you arrive, you will see this nice friendly screen. You can select what model. There's a default, there's legacy, and there's GPT-4. Now, I'm paying for GPT-4, so I have access to it. It costs me $20 a month, which has been super useful for me. Uh, but even without it, uh, you could always use Bing Chat to you know, play around with GPT-4 because Bing Chat is built on GPT-4. Finding inspiration. So I'll be like Athena. I made up this uh, prompt, but look at it. It immediately just told me what to do. So I can look at existing playdate apps. Are there anything? Look into child mm -hmm. development research. Talk to parents. Attend networking events. Events focusing on app design or child development. That will help me understand what to do. So it's brilliant. Like I don't need to think about what to do next because ChatGPT is told me what to do next. Now remember, this is what ChatGPT thinks is the correct answer, right? Use your common sense. Ask a real human whether any of these make sense. So let's look at the first one. Look at the existing Playdate apps. Okay. Do you know of any Playdate apps? Cool. There are several Playdate apps in the app stores. Now I don't even need to find them on my own. I already have these ones. So you're already seeing how what would typically take me like half an hour, one hour, 
going around, ideating, planning with people, etc. I just have in two minutes. Fantastic. Let's look at the next idea. Generating user flows. Yeah, this is fun. I might be a designer who doesn't know what a plumber is or who doesn't know what is involved in a plumber's job. You could literally ask that to ChatGPT and then understand if ChatGPT knows something about it. And hey, then you don't have to do the research. Oh, lovely. Check this out. User opens the app, sees the homepage, select the plumbing services. They go to the plumbing page and they select inspection. Like you're seeing these step-by-step -step things. Like the entire user journey has been written out for you. Ask for your data to create personas. Yeah, persona making is always fun. And you don't always have the data you need to create a personas. Here we go. Malaysians tend to prefer Japanese car brands such as Honda, Toyota, and Nissan. Now, immediately, my persona is going to own a Honda or a Toyota car. Just like that. Now, design system documentation is super duper fun. That nobody ever. Um, but I've been experimenting with this in conjunction with a UI designer friend of mine. The goal of this prompt is to just get started with design system to be given to the developers. So I'm going to just copy this. I had to write this down because it takes quite a while to type out, right? And let's see the response. Ooh, there we go. Recommended placement. This is sample. Like, you can replace these images of the final thing, right? Just so it's more contextual for the user. But understand, ChatGPT gives me the first draft I can use here. And now all I have to do is actually have to change these values to what are actually there in my design. And I give it to my developers. And you could possibly turn this into a template and just replicate it across all the different components you want. You know, just see, hey, is it true? Can it really generate websites for me? And is it cool? What website do I want? Of course, I want a cat website. Give me the code for a website that displays a random photo of a cat and a button below the photo. Clicking on the button will make a new photo of a cat appear. So very, very basic website, right? So I'm going to paste this here. Here's the sample code for a website. It displays a random photo. Note this code uses jQuery library to make an API call to the cat API library. Okay? It just figured out what it needs to make a random cat appear. What I'm going to do now is copy the code, go to Sublime Text, paste it, and let's save this as random cat. Okay, and we're going to open the random cat.html. Okay. I have my cat generator website. Uh, beyond that, there are other AI driven tools out there which I'm just going to share because it's not just one tool that is going to drive the future for you now. As a designer, I think it's very imperative that we get used to AI-assisted tools even more, that we can speed up our workflow and get the edge over everybody else who's still struggling with things, right? And maybe we can help each other for new things there. Um, yeah, that's it for my conversation today. I enjoyed myself. You can get in touch with me in all these different ways on screen, and you can download this presentation for your reference. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mahir. So I'll be mentioning this link for this uh, okay. presentation so you can directly get in contact with me from all the links that you see here. But before we end this session, I also have a couple of questions which a lot of us are really curious to know about. I wanted to know, like, not just me, the whole world wants to know, can AI replace human designers in the UX design process? Definitely no, not anytime soon. Um, the way I'm seeing it, it's still not going to generate the things that are going to be pixel perfect. Uh, let me put it this way. My clients are not able to describe exactly what they want. It's a big back and forth of does this work? Yes, no. Does it work? Yes, no. Similarly to what you saw me doing with ChatGPT, when it gave me something and I'm like, hey, it's still not correct. Make a change, right? It's the same kind of relationship here. So I don't see people losing their jobs outright, but people will have to retool themselves in order to not lose their job to somebody who is better at using AI tools than they are. So uh, the next question is like, how do you see AI impacting the future of UX design? Like, What changes are going to come? There are multiple things that we need to look at. One is from the pure perspective of, I have a job, is my job in threat? We talked a bit about that. Uh, but even in the context of working with AI, I think everyone's going to have to learn how to deal with AI, how to talk to it, what kind of context do I need to give, how to phrase things. 15 years ago, when Google came out, uh, it was all about who can write the right things to get the best results from Google, right? Knowing your Google foo was a very, very valuable skill. So along the same lines, a prompt engineer or somebody who knows how to give the correct prompts to AI is the one who's going to excel. Uh, so the next question is like, uh, can AI help reduce bias in uh, design process? Definitely. The AI will help you reduce bias if you make sure your training set for the AI isn't biased in the first place. Uh, there are 
lots of movements around the ethics of AI that are happening. It is very important to be a part of these conversations so that we can help affect how the AI is trained. So yeah, uh, one uh, last question, like um, what are the limitations of AI in UX design? Like uh, how can designers work around it at the moment? The limitations of AI are the guardrails put in place around ethics, around content. Now, if you are a UX designer that is designing for political change or that is designing in vice industries, you will have a tough time using AI to ideate or do things in those domains because yeah, OpenAI is not ready to let their AI touch those things. Uh, if you are in a company with very, very deep pockets, you might have an arrangement where you've got your own custom you know, AI being trained. That's totally separate. Again, goes back to the, this is my AI, AI right? Uh, but besides that, another limitation is stringing together different AI tools. Now, what I had done is I started with ChatGPT, got my outline, then I started researching different aspects of those topics in the outline, one by one. And then I started going out to other websites, pulling in data. I went to Canva, gave it some information I got from ChatGPT, got the output. I went to Midjourney, gave it some information from ChatGPT, I generated some images, right? And this is just a short bit. As a creative professional, you will now like see this place where you can keep jumping between tools, taking the output of one AI-generated thing as an input for another AI-generated thing. And you will learn to just sort of string these things together. Maybe you will have these AI you know, assistants in your tool chain. One person is going to spit out your entire, uh, say, feature list. Then the next mm-hmm. AI thing is going to give you concept sketches, Another tool is going to help you flesh those out in terms of user journeys, maybe spin up prototypes with all the in-between stages automatically. And maybe another AI engine is going to help you create the variations for your EV testing. Who knows, right? But you should be able to jump between these tools for now. Maybe in 10 years, maybe one of you could design a tool that will just do the end-to-end with one single prompt. That will be the dream. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, those were my questions. And uh, thank you, Mahir, for joining this talk and uh, providing this amazing presentation to our audience here. So thank you, Mahir, for joining. Uh, And I'll mention the link for the presentation in the description so you can definitely check it out. And also, I'll be mentioning uh, Mahir's LinkedIn. So if you want to contact him, go there as well.